Good morning, everybody. My name's Amanda. I'm one of the sea lion and penguin keepers here at the Houston Zoo. And this morning, I am joining you live from our newest Humboldt penguin exhibit, part of our Galapagos exhibit opening this Friday. Members will get a special preview starting tomorrow and Thursday. So to share a little bit about our new exhibit, um, we currently have 10 penguins. Um, you'll notice as they're swimming by, they have these bracelets on their flippers. So that's how we can tell them apart. Um, so some of them, you'll see their names on their flippers. Eventually the males will have these black bands and females will have white bands. Um, the ones with colors, those came from their previous facilities. Um, so we're actually getting penguins from eight different facilities. Um, they all have different personalities. One that you've probably already heard about is Dora. So Dora the Explorer is a perfect name for her because she is one of the bravest penguins. Um, and she's right up front. You'll see she's got a, na a band with her name on it that's white. Um, and she is our youngest penguin and she's also our bravest penguin. So she's always the first to explore new things and she was the first penguin to be part of the Houston Zoo colony. So she is definitely a keeper and I'm sure will be a guest favorite very soon. Another uh, penguin that has a, a unique personality is Fisher. So he's very sweet and gentle. That's actually him that just swam by. Um, and he will actually greet keepers with a little song. He likes to sing to keepers. Um, other personalities, um, a little bit opposite from Fisher is Tabasco, so he's a little spicy. Um, so if the penguins didn't have those flipper bands, um, you can actually tell them apart by their spot pattern on their chest. You'll see they each have a different kind of layout on their chest of these spots. It's kind of like their individual fingerprint. So for example, Dora, she only has spots on her chest up top, kind of like a sweetheart neckline, we say. Um, whereas Tabasco, his spots make a little T on his chest. So that's why we named him Tabasco. Um, other ones that you're looking at right now, um, that one right now is Churro. Something special about her, when she eats, she actually likes to have the fish tossed to her um, and she can catch it from a pretty good distance. Another one that's swimming by right here, this is Isabel with that purple band. Um, she likes to take her fish on the go. <laughs> so she likes to take her fish away from the group when she eats. So as you can see, they all have these different personalities. This one that's hanging out up front, um, he just left, but that was Darwin. Um, who else haven't we talked about? Carino is also very sweet. Um, so again, we do have 10, but we will be getting five more at the end of April to equal a total of 15 to start our Houston Zoo colony. This is the first time the Houston Zoo has ever had penguins, so it's very exciting. And how they all got here is a fun story. So it was quite the adventure. So I went on a road trip to pick up the first six penguins. So Dora, as I've mentioned, was the first one. So me and two coworkers, we drove to the Scoville Zoo, which is about three hours south of Chicago. We picked up Dora. Columbus Zoo met us with two penguins. And then we drove to Kansas City and we picked up Queso there. Um, and then we drove to Wichita, Kansas, Sedway County Zoo, picked up two more penguins for that was our total of six. And what did that look like? They all had their individual crates in the van. Um, and since we did this road trip in winter, it was actually pretty cold. <laughs> so I got the common question of how did you keep the penguins um, cold enough, but it was actually how do we keep it warm enough for them because Humboldt penguins are temperate species, which means that they actually thrive in warmer climates. So the temperature in there right now is about 65 to 70, which is kind of their, their happy place. Um, so during the transport, we were taking um, the temperature of, uh, throughout the van in their crates to make sure that they were comfortable. There was a lot of honking noises. Um, you can imagine it didn't smell super great. Um, it was about a 24 hour road trip with the penguins. 
Um, so then we were back for a few days, and then I flew out to Seattle and picked up two birds, but this time they flew. So it's like, well, how do you fly with penguins? So they rode in cargo, and I was just a normal passenger, and nobody had any idea that there were penguins on their flight. And then to equal our 10, we got two penguins. One of them was Fisher and Carino um, from the Denver Zoo. And so that is how we got all 10. And then the next five will be joining us um, later this month. Now, a little bit about the exhibit. So I already mentioned the air temperature. Um, so it is actually fully enclosed. And there's a few reasons for that. One being it's really hot in Houston during the summer, as we all know. Um, so even though they are temperate species, it can be a little too warm in Houston for them. And then the other reason is penguins are actually very susceptible to malaria, which is caused by mosquitoes. And you also know we have plenty of those in Houston. So that's why our exhibit is fully enclosed to protect them from the Houston heat and the Houston mosquitoes. Now, as you're looking at the exhibit, it's very long, so that allows for them to do their natural behavior of porpoising. Um, so they can swim up to about 30 miles an hour and they will jump in and out of the water as a group. And they have been doing that really well using the whole exhibit. Here they go. They're going to practice that for me. Um, so they can swim really fast, like I said, 30 miles an hour. Um, and you'll see these little bubbles trailing off their back occasionally. They're able to trap air under their flipper, or I'm sorry, under their feathers, and then the air is just escaping. So that's why they have those bubbles coming off their back. Now, there is also natural sunlight that comes in. It's on this side of the exhibit that I'm standing on right now. Um, and so there's two skylights. So they are still getting um, natural sunlight. And the deepest part of the exhibit is where they've actually been preferring to stay. Um, it, it gets to about nine feet deep. There's also some nest box tunnels on the exhibit. They're actually hidden though, so you can't see them. They're actually so hidden, the penguins haven't found them yet. Um, this group of penguins is pretty young. So the oldest penguin we have is, is Fisher, so he's six years old. Um, and then the youngest is Dorette, too. Um, so the average is about three or four, um, and penguins can live into their 30s. So they're all pretty young, and they've actually been really curious um, up at the glass, I think guests are really going to enjoy um, watching the penguins because they are pretty interactive and very curious. They have all been getting along really well, too. From day one, um, there hasn't been any major penguin drama, um, and everybody is getting along really well. And they're adapting to the new exhibit really well, too. Um, Waylon asked a question, what are their enrichment items? That's a great question. Um, I will tell you, Carino is one. His favorite thing is mirrors. So he really likes mirrors. They also really enjoy anything that's shiny. Um, and feathers, they like to chase things, also laser pointers, um, different kinds of lights. So that was a great question um, for enrichment. Now, something that might be coming up fairly soon is molting season. So molting season um, starts in the spring, and what that looks like is penguins will actually lose all of their feathers at once. It's actually called catastrophic molting, which sounds really intense. <laughs> um, some bird species, they just lose their feathers a little bit throughout the year, uh, but penguins once a year will lose all of them at once. So what that looks like is the new feathers um, are pushing out the old feathers and sometimes they they look pretty rough <laughs> so they kind of look like exploding pillows when this happens and they'll be pretty grumpy um, sometimes you can't even really see their faces because the feathers are covering them so it usually takes a few weeks so if you're visiting the zoo and you're excited to see the penguins and then you see one that looks like they're just having a rough time um, it's only for a couple weeks and that's just that molting process that is normal and happens once a year. 
What is their diet, somebody asked. Um, so that's a great question. We feed them capelin and silver sides. Silver sides are like their dessert. They love the silver sides. They're a really small fish, and a lot of times we'll scatter it in the water. Um, so we feed them about twice a day, and that also brings up a point. So since they came from so many different facilities, to try to keep you know, because it was a big change for them to move new facility, new animals that they're sharing their new home with. Um, I did a lot of talking with their previous keepers and tried to keep their um, like diet and things like that, enrichment, things that they really prefer, um, similar to what the majority of the facilities were doing. We also are able to weigh them. Um, we're doing it about once a week or so. Um, and they're just, they're really great about just hopping on this really small scale that we can bring out to exhibit to keep track of their weight um, to make sure that they're all eating well. Cheryl has a question. She asked, how do they sleep? Um, so over here is where they have been sleeping. If you wanna pan over to this side of the exhibit, um, you can see this is their preferred side of the exhibit. And um, you can tell by the evidence. Um, I've, I've had a lot of people, what's that white stuff? That is what you think it is. It is uh, bird poop. <laughs> um, so that's what that looks like. And that's where they've been spending a, a good portion of their time. Um, and they will sleep on land. Um, sometimes you'll see them lay down. So they'll sometimes lay down and sometimes they'll sleep standing up as well. They might tuck their beaks underneath their flipper. Now this side too of the exhibit is, is the deep end, so this is where it's nine feet. Um, you'll also see a lot of bubbles coming up. That's another form of enrichment. Somebody had asked about enrichment. This is an enrichment kind of thing that's built into the exhibit, which is really cool. So we can turn it on and off. And so um, the penguins have kind of swam through it and they seem to enjoy having that um, different aspect as part of their habitat. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, another thing about the Humboldt species, you may be wondering, since it is the Galapagos exhibit, the Galapagos penguin is their cousin. So they are a little bit smaller than Humboldt penguins, but they look very similar. And the reason we don't have Galapagos penguins is they're endangered, like a lot of species uh, um, in the Galapagos Islands. But what's really cool is the Galapagos Islands, we are actually still connected to them through our one shared ocean. And so any actions that we can take at home um, to help reduce their threats um, really helps ensure that we keep a healthy ocean. So some of these actions that we um, can do, things like skipping the straw, using reusable bottles, and reusable bags when we go to the grocery store. These really simple actions can help save animals in the wild, like penguins. All right, well just remember that tomorrow, starting tomorrow, members get an early preview of the Galapagos exhibit. So tomorrow and Thursday, and then Friday is our opening day, and we cannot wait for you guys to see the exhibit. It's very exciting. So thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope to see you very soon. Goodbye, everybody.